Cunning, liar, enigmatic, and fearsome are just a few words used to describe a particular member of the SCP Foundation. While many of the Foundation's researchers and scientists are a pretty unusual bunch, to say the least, this one might just take the cake, and then might have said cake decommissioned in the most collaterally damaging way imaginable. Similar to the infamous Dr. Bright always switching bodies, appearing with all manner of ever-shifting faces, genders, and even species, this particular Foundation Department head is also no stranger to never looking the same way twice. In his case, he can't be photographed properly, at least not by any conventional means. Thanks to some unknown anomalous augmentation, any pictures taken of this researcher will have the face swapped with that of a random animal. However, these pictures will always feature the same characteristic grin much like the smile of a Cheshire cat, a notorious liar not to be trusted by anyone. Dr. Alto Clef is one of the SCP Foundation's strangest members of personnel. For starters, Dr. Alto Clef isn't even technically his real name, more a nickname that became synonymous with the mysterious scientist, and served as a convenient shorthand for his alleged real name. You see, According to the entity most commonly known as Dr. Clef, his real name is actually a sound unpronounceable by human beings. His name is, apparently, the A major chord played on a ukulele. This explains why the strange doctor always carries the instrument around with him, should anyone wish to refer to him using his real name on a strum of those strings. In fact, he used to go by a completely different name, the Ukulele Man, and sometimes Agent Ukulele thanks to his predilection for playing the string instrument. So where did the Alto Clef nickname come from? Well, that one's easy. Dr. Clef received this nickname thanks to his penchant for signing off reports with a hand-drawn Alto Clef symbol, a type of musical note. Dr. Clef had long been one of the more enigmatic and mysterious scientists working at the Foundation. He is perhaps more of an oddity than the elusive and infamous O5 Council themselves although that one is probably up for debate. Alto Clef was formerly an operative for the Global Cult Coalition, although he first attracted the attention of the SCP Foundation a while before then. A number of research papers Clef published at a redacted university happened to catch the Foundation's eye, mostly for their bizarre and lurid subject matter. Much of the content and even the title of some of his works are redacted, but what we do know is that one of Clef's papers described certain traits that matched an existing SCP they had catalogued in their archive. There was no way this could have been a coincidence. Somehow Alto Clef had knowledge of the anomalous and had to be considered a potential risk to security. During a conversation with the agent that was sent to investigate his strange research papers, Alto Clef was able to convince her to offer him a job within the Foundation. It seems exceptionally unusual that Clef was able to pull this off, as most women working for the SCP Foundation have reported that the man possesses a positively slimy personality. So, why even bother to hire this guy if he seems to be such a creep? Well, it turned out that the acquisition of Dr. Clef wasn't without its advantages namely the capture and containment of SCP-447. This SCP, for anyone who might be unfamiliar, is an anomaly in two parts. The first, SCP-447-1, is a sphere composed entirely of a green, slime-like substance. It's warm to the touch, the same sort of heat as an ordinary human body, and has no adverse or harmful effects on anyone that comes into contact with it. SCP-447-2 is a viscous green slime that is excreted by the main ball. This excretion can be eaten or can increase the fuel efficiency of gasoline by 150% when they are mixed. The sphere and the substance are only known to be harmful when they come into contact with dead bodies, although what exactly occurs when this happens has been redacted by the O5 Council. Nonetheless, Dr. Alto Clef was reportedly instrumental in retrieving SCP-447, and given the usefulness of its slime to the Foundation, the doctor had in turn proved his own worth. The consensus seems to be that, while his personality might be annoying or even outright repulsive in some instances, 
Alto Clef is still able to perform his job with precision and competence, making the Doctor a useful asset to the SCP Foundation. During his time there, Clef became well known for being somewhat of a gun enthusiast as well. In fact, he earned his own brand of infamy for his habit of brutally decommissioning dangerous SCPs, and you can probably guess what we mean by that. In other words, Clef established himself as the Foundation's go-to executioner. Sometimes he's a little too good at his job, though. In one instance, Clef brought a chainsaw to work that he thought possessed supernatural properties. However, this happened to take place at the Foundation's annual costume party, causing the Doctor to think that a riot was taking place thanks to personnel all being dressed as D-Class. Chainsaw in hand, Clef murdered half of his own research staff without a second thought. It also turned out that the chainsaw hadn't had any anomalous properties in the first place. That was an HR nightmare. Dr. Clef is renowned for having brutal efficiency, not shying away from causing the deaths of countless civilian lives during his decommissioning of anomalies. As long as he is able to kill or contain an SCP to further the course of science, or protect the majority of the civilian world, then Clef will view any possible deaths and collateral damage caused by his actions as acceptable losses. In short, he is a necessary evil. But perhaps Clef's best-known attempt at decommissioning an anomaly was during the SCP-239 incident, also known by the nickname of the Witch Child. SCP-239 might appear to be a harmless eight-year-old child, but she's actually a powerful reality-bending anomaly with impervious, indestructible skin. Her capabilities are almost limitless, and she can influence the world and people around her in virtually any way that she can imagine. As long as she is conscious and can see her surroundings, SCP-239 can create living matter or make it disappear, wishing things into or out of existence with as little as a simple thought. Or as her file in the SCP archive puts it, if she can see it, she can change it. Although SCP-239 was being contained by the Foundation, given a pre-approved list of spells that she was allowed to perform and kept calm at all times so she wouldn't think to cause harm to herself or anyone around her, Dr. Clef didn't think that this was adequate enough. In a report, he claimed that the Witch Child's containment wasn't suitable, and that she posed a major security risk to the SCP Foundation and its personnel. You see, given his time with the Global Occult Coalition, Dr. Clef had become somewhat of an expert in anomalies with the ability to reshape reality, making him particularly wary of SCP-239. It was his proposal that the Foundation should not overestimate its own ability to contain these reality benders, and that they should instead strike first. Dr. Clef's idea was simple. Use some form of sharp implement to kill SCP-239. Of course, given the witch child's impenetrable skin, this is a lot easier said than done. But Clef had a few solutions handy to work around this. Firstly, his plan was that this decommissioning would be carried out at night when SCP-239 was asleep, and as a result, her reality-altering powers would be neutralized. Second, the implement used to kill her would be made out of SCP-148, the Telekill Alloy. This anomaly is a metal that the Foundation keeps stored in blocks that has the unique property of being able to block telepathic and mimetic effects. Now that plan on its own might sound fine on paper. That is, if you're on board with murdering an eight-year-old SCP while she's asleep, you monster. But there were a number of risks for Clef to consider. SCP-239 could wake up during her termination and would then be able to resist being killed. But another far more complicated risk was that SCP-239 could wake up, perceive the person carrying out her termination as a friend, as someone who wouldn't harm her, and her abilities would then alter the world around her to make this the case, changing reality to match. To try and avoid this outcome, Dr. Clef volunteered himself as the one who would carry out the procedure. With his mysterious past, dealing with reality-changing anomalies as a member of the Global Occult Coalition, he overzealously thought he was the only man cut out for the job. However, in his arrogance, Clef made the fatal mistake of transmitting his plan openly to Foundation personnel, instead of using secure encrypted channels. You see, over time, SCP-239 had formed bonds with a number of the Site-17 staff that had been assigned to her. Regardless of whether staff members had sympathy towards the girl, or because her perception of them had altered reality and bent their intentions, Dr. Kondraki had to step in and intervene. And, of course, this led to an altercation between the two. 
Thanks to Kondraki's efforts, Dr. Kleff's proposed plan of decommissioning SCP-239, a defenseless, anomalous child, was thwarted. Even so, during the incident, Clef showed how remarkably and worryingly easy he found it to outwit the Foundation's defenses and security forces. Though he walked away from his attempted murder of SCP-239 with a few severe injuries, Clef's career wasn't impeded upon in the slightest. In fact, the O5 Council promoted him to the position of department head for the SCP Foundation's Division of Training and Development. Thanks to his reputation for swift, relentless, and surgically precise methods of terminating SCPs. However, Dr. Clef's actions during the SCP-239 incident prompted some within the Foundation to take a closer look at his past. A tricky thing to do, especially seeing as Clef is known to be a liar and not someone to be trusted, and that this has been a long-time habit of his that is unlikely to change. However, there does exist a service record for a global occult coalition operative who used to go by the codename of Ukulele. First recruited into the coalition in 1981, Ukulele was reported to have killed a number of known threat entities, or KTEs, but these usually came with the result of heavy casualties, including the deaths of other GOC operatives. One Colonel Richard Adams is quoted in Ukulele's service record as saying, Does anyone know who this guy is or where he came from? He's good at what he does, right, but every time I ask him about his past, I get a completely different answer. Eventually, after 99 confirmed kills of anomalous entities, the operative known as Ukulele expressed a desire to return from active service within the Coalition. This request was granted, and sometime later he resurfaced working for the SCP Foundation under a new name, Dr. Alto Clef. Naturally, Dr. Clef has never confirmed nor denied that he is, in fact, Ukulele, although his habit of playing the instrument does seem to imply that there is some sort of connection there. After all, that's not as strange as some of the other rumors floating around about our old friend Alto Clef. Some think he's an incarnation of the devil himself, or that he even married a goddess and had several children with her. Others claim Clef is the biological father of SCP-166 a girl with deer horns and the ability to make anything man-made corrode. Then again, you'd be better off coming up with your own answer than asking Dr. Clef about his past. He's hardly likely to give you a straight answer, providing he doesn't accidentally kill you on the spot. Now go check out SCP Foundation Boss The Administrator Explained and SCP Immortal Dr. Bright Explained for more of the inside scoop on the mysterious figures behind the SCP Foundation.